Well, the Phillies now find themselves 10 games above the 500 mark. <laughs> Welcome to Philly Science Field Media. Jerry Cabin. Tonight's game in 10-5 with Phillies and the Washington Nationals as the Phillies defeat the Nationals by a final score of 7-2 as we now take the first two games of this four-game series and now secure uh, at least a series split. Now, guys, before we get into this video, please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please join us well. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. Uh, so the long ball was certainly there tonight. We got to see home runs from Reese Hoskins, Nick Castellanos, Derek Hall, JT Muto, and Kyle Schwarber. Uh, so the long ball certainly was helping us tonight. Kyle Gibson with six perfect innings. Unfortunately, he just kind of you know lost it there in the seventh by hitting Victor Robles and then allowing Daniel Hernandez to single on a line drive to left field. Uh, but he still was very good tonight. He was very dialed in. Uh, only striking out four, but man, he got the job done. I mean, the defense behind him certainly did their job. Uh, uh, so another exciting Phillies win, right? I mean, the announcers were much better tonight on Apple TV. I will say that. Uh, so I was able to watch the game on my phone. Uh, but, I mean, certainly an exciting one for sure. Uh, so Kyle Gibson now 7-4 and four on the year. The Phillies now 10 games above 500. Think about that. Now we have a chance to make it 12 games above 500 uh, if we sweep the series, which I think we will. As we make up the scoring summary here in the bottom of the first inning, Reese Hoskins, homers on a fly ball, two left center field, home runs in back-to-back -back nights. His 22nd of the season, 1 0 Philadelphia. So, Reese Hoskins, I think we're definitely you know, getting on a Reese Hoskins run. Uh, this guy's home runs, you know, usually come in bunches, right? I mean, uh, usually. Uh, you know, not as much this year, and even more spread out this year, but I mean, typically, you know, over the course of Reese Hoskins' career, he usually tends to hit home runs uh, in bunches. Uh, so a solo shot puts the fills uh, in front one to nothing. Uh, so uh, there you go right there uh, off of Joshua Gray. Guy, we haven't really done too well against uh, going into tonight's ballgame, and uh, that definitely changed tonight. Then we pick it up here in the same inning, Nick Castellanos. Uh, a nice deep drive to left field as he was on a fly ball deep to left field. A no down. I mean, he absolutely destroyed that one. A two-run shot also scores JT Muto. 3 nothing Philadelphia. Re uh, you know, with the Nick Castellanos, that was his first... Uh, home run at Citizens Bank Park since June 30th against the Atlanta Braves. So he certainly was due for a bomb at Citizens Bank Park. Uh, and that was a bomb for sure, man. That ball was destroyed. He absolutely demolished that one off of Joshua Gray. Uh, so I'm sure that feels pretty good for Nick Castellanos. I mean, we'll talk to him a little bit later uh, how hot he has been uh, over the last two to three weeks. He is just dialed in. He is just dialed in. The home runs are finally starting to come for this guy. Uh, then we pick it up here in this same inning. Jarek Hall joins in on the action as he homers on a fly ball to right field way back there. His sixth of the season. A solo shot uh, as the Phillies go back to back. Uh, and it's a 4 nothing Phillies lead here in the first inning off of Joshua Gray. Uh, so, I mean, uh, we got that abbreviated 5-4 win last night against the Nationals. Uh, and then we come back the very next night and we have to put up a four spot just in the bottom of the first inning. Uh, so, how about that Derek Hall? I mean, we talked about before how good that OPS is. It sits well above the 800 mark. Uh, now, six home runs on the year for him. Long ball haul, right? I mean, long ball haul. Then we pick it up here in the bottom of the third inning. J.T. Ramuto does it again. I mean, we talked about this guy cooling off a little bit. I mean, yeah, three and nine tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so, Certainly not cooling off as he homers on a fly ball to left field. The ball was way up there. I mean, my goodness gracious, it sounded like it was going to go up to outer space. Uh, a two-run shot as he scores Reese Hoskins. Uh, number 11 for a guy that used to wear number 11 during his time at the Miami Marlins. Uh, and it's now a 6-0 uh, Phillies lead. So the Phillies now lead at 6 nothing, a commanding 6 uh, nothing lead for this Phillies team uh, over this, this really just a bad Nationals team, right? The worst record in all the majors. Think about that. The worst record in all the majors. I, you know, I kind of feel a little bit bad for this team. I mean, my gosh. Uh, three years ago, they ain't won a World Series yet. Uh, so they're, they're bad. I mean, they sent a notification uh, at the beginning of the game, uh, you know, saying, oh, it's on Apple TV. They said, oh, we get to watch J.T. Muto and the Phillies battle out Luke Voigt and the Nationals. That's like the, that's like the face of their team right now, Luke Voigt. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, and no knock to him. I mean, the guy, you know, led the league in home runs in 2020, hit over 20 home runs uh, in a 60-game season back, you know, two years ago. So this guy, you know, certainly is no slouch. Uh, but the fact that Luke Voigt is your best player, I mean, he's the, like the face of your team, and that's just like, wow. Uh, I mean, just because you show you how bad they are, right? I mean, uh, Juan Soto gone, Josh Bell gone. 
Uh, they, that, they, everybody's just cleared out. Then we pick it up here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Kyle Schwarber, uh, homer 75 ball, two center field. It's his seventh home run against the Nationals this year. Uh, number 34 for Schwarbs. Uh, of course, it was another solo shot. This guy's like the king of solo home runs. 7-0 uh, Philadelphia. Uh, so Kyle Schwarber uh, does it again to his former team. Uh, you know, like off of former Philly, Victor Rano. I mean, you all remember Victor Rano. I mean, he actually had a pretty good year for us in 2018. Then we pick it up here in the top of the eighth inning. Demir Vargas hits a second place fly out to center. Lane Thomas comes around to score. Washington gets on the board. Now a 7-1 ball game. Uh, so it wasn't really the end of the world. That was off of Kyle Gibson. Uh, but this was a sacrifice fly to put the Nationals is now down by uh, now down by six. Uh, so they're still, uh, you know, way far behind. Uh, doing pick it up here in the top of the ninth inning. Uh, Kerber Ruiz grounds out the third as Luis Garcia comes around to score. Uh, and it's now a 7-2 ball game. Uh, so Nationals got to get a little bit closer. Uh, so uh, Kerber Ruiz definitely the catcher of the future for the Nationals. I mean, this guy is going to be so good. Uh, so you definitely got to keep your eye on for sure. So that would be your final 7-2 Philadelphia. Take the first two games of this four-game series. Now 10 games over 500. I'm very proud of this team. Kyle Schwarber out of Leon's spot. Only when it was a big one, he solo home run out to center field. He crushed that one. A 2 of 4 average now for Schwarber's 34 home run, 67 RBI, uh, and 809 OPS. Uh, so I can't just, I, I just can't believe this. I mean, this guy could easily hit 50 home runs this year. Easily. He's going to get a career high in home runs, no question. Uh, and uh, Reese Haskins, only when it was a big one, uh, the solo shot to the left center field. Uh, as he also draws two walks. I love to see it, man. This guy just gets on base just, a, just such a good amount. Uh, and, uh, 827 OPS it definitely reflects in that OPS. 51 RBIs now for Reese, 22 tanks. 253 average as well, and uh, Al Boehm with a, uh, another knock tonight as his average now sits at 296. And JT removed a three-hit night. Uh, you thought he was cooling off. I said it. I, th I thought he was cooling off a little bit. Uh, a two-run home run, a towering two-run run to left field. Uh, that ball was absolutely crushed. 263 average now for JT, 11 home run, 29 RBIs, now just one shine, 50 on the year. He has 764 PS. Uh, so this keeps getting uh, higher and higher and higher. Uh, and uh, Nick Castellanos, oh, it was a big one. The two-run home run to left field way back there. And he started seeing the OPS, a 684 OPS. So it's definitely getting better now. The 16.5, 700, uh, 257 average as well. Ten home runs now. He finally reaches double digits. Uh, so he was stuck on eight home runs. It seemed like forever. Uh, and uh, Derek Hall, two knocks this evening. And he sold a home run out to right field. Uh, his sixth of the season, a 273 average for Hall. Uh, and uh, 864 PS. I mean, that's well above the 800 mark. Think about that. And 864 PS. Uh, you know, for a guy, you know, in, you know his rookie year. Uh, I mean, that is very, very impressive. And it's, it's something you don't really hear too much about. You don't really hear too much about Derek Hall's success and almost 100 at bats now. Uh, so that, that is just no slouch at all. Uh, and uh, Gene Segura, his performance uh, tonight, I mean, it seems like he's you know, taking a little bit while for him to kind of excel back into a groove. Uh, he has not looked really looked that great since coming back. Uh, and uh, Bryson started his performance tonight as well. Uh, and uh, Brandon Mars gets a start on center, uh, as you would expect. And uh, he also goes hitless as well. But I tell you what, man, I mean, uh, collecting nine hits tonight as a team. Uh, we only struck out four times as a team. We walked three times. Uh, we were all over Joshua Gray. I mean, his stuff is just catching way too much of the play. This is a guy we have not really hit too well against uh, in games prior. Kyle Gibson, eight innings, two hits, one run, the run was earned, one walk, and four strikeouts. He was excellent tonight. He, he was really excellent. Now, granted, he Yes, he was going against the lousy, lousy Washington Nationals, but still, I mean, it's not easy uh, to hold any opponent. I don't care who it is. Six perfect innings. I mean, that, that's it's so impressive. He flirted with history tonight uh, in South Philadelphia. So, I mean, you know, props to Kyle Gibson for that. 34-year-old was certainly dialed in tonight. I mean, definitely was the uh, the pitch to contact kind of guy. Uh, and I definitely feel much more confident, uh, you know, with our defense with Brandon Marsh dying out in center field. I mean, this is a guy that, I mean, certainly is definitely an upgrade out there. No question about that. I feel so much more comfortable in our outfield uh, with the amount of, you know, ground this guy covers, the amount of range this guy has. Uh, so, uh, you know, props to Kyle Gibson. I mean, this props to you, man. Uh, and uh, Brad Hand uh, gets the, uh, you know, the ball there in the top of the ninth inning and allows the RBI ground out. Uh, that really wasn't that significant. As he, uh, he still has a 2-2-0. Oh, he He's still been so good for this Phillies team. Uh, so that is pretty much it. Phillies now sit at 58-48 and 48, uh, as uh, they are uh, now in sole possession of that third wild card spot. Uh, but I tell you, man, it's starting to get a little hair. Lucky Brewers and the St. Louis Cardinals are now in the first place tie. 
uh, for the NL Central Division. Uh, the Cardinals are still losing to the Yankees at the time of this video, and it seems like the uh, uh, the Brewers will win tonight against the Cincinnati Reds. Well, now we'll put them back in sole possession of first place in the NL Central. Now we're going to be a game up above the Cardinals. So uh, this is a very, very tight race. Uh, but uh, hopefully we can hang on to win this. I mean, I, I just really want to. I just really want to see playoffs. Uh, and uh, the Braves currently lead the Mets nine to five. Uh, that game is in the bottom of the ninth inning with one out, and it does look like the Braves will hang on to win that one. Uh, the Braves have definitely not been playing the best of baseball though lately. There's no question about that. Uh, I tell you the man, the Mets. I mean, I, I want to talk about the Mets. I, I think I think it's very uh, important that I discuss this. I, I'm sold on. I mean, they're a very good team. Uh, Edwin Diaz has just been a legendary. I mean, he's been he's been amazing. Uh, and I do think that Buck Schulter probably will win manager of the year. I mean, this is a team that uh, every time at the All-Star Big, they've just fallen apart. And I don't think they will this year. I mean, I think the Mets will win this division. Uh, wow, I can't believe I just said that. But, I mean, they're just a very good team, man. They got a lot of the pieces are finally starting to come together. Uh, they're actually healthy. I understand they, you know, they're still you know, battling a little injuries here and there. But they're finally a healthy baseball team, it seems like. They have the roster that can really go to, to go to length. I mean, I'm not going to rule the Braves out. Of course, I'd much rather see the Braves win the division than the New York Mets. But I'm just trying to be objective. Uh, the Mets have just gained so much momentum. I mean, what they did in that two-game series against the Yankees, sweeping them out and... Uh, I mean, this is a very good baseball team. I mean, a very good baseball team. One of the best in the National League, as it shows in their record. And I give them a lot of credit. Billy Epler has done a very good job there. But Showalter has done a very good job there. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people, I mean, Mets fans, I know a few Mets fans watch my video. I'm like, you know, going down in the comment section, what is your problem? Are you feeling okay? You are actually talking good about the New York Mets. Yes, I am. Yes, I am, Mets fans who are watching this video. I mean, I know it sounds weird. I mean, hey, I, I'm just, for, just for the record, I am feeling okay. Right? I did check the temperature. Uh, before I started this video, as the Mets sit at uh, 67-38, it will be 67-39 because they're going to about to lose this game to the Atlanta Braves. Uh, but I mean, they still have a nice, uh, comfortable three and a half game lead against the Atlanta Braves. So uh, you know, it's still. I mean, I don't know. I mean, of course, uh, you know, anything can happen. You see, the Braves have had a flair for the dramatic. And even if the Mets do go on a little like you know five games skid, and the Braves got out, of course, the Braves you know can take over the division. Doesn't mean they're going to win the division. Vice versa, uh, and you know, and vice versa. Uh, but, I mean, of course, the Braves also are a very good team defending World Series champions. It's going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Uh, the Braves, I mean, uh, you know, Matt Olsen has been a doubles machine this year. Austin Riley, who's just one of the most underrated players in baseball. Ron Cunha Jr. is going to wake up. Uh, you know, I'm really impressed with that Braves, you know, pitching staff and Spencer Strider. I mean, that guy just throws absolute heat. You know, Max Reed, I mean, he's definitely a horse, no question about that. So, I mean, these are two very good teams, especially now with Jacob DeGrom back now on the Mets. Uh, you, know, we, you know, with him being healthy, Max Scherzer is still performing at a very high level. Uh, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens, you know, here in the Central East. Uh, but, uh, you know, also, you know, the Mets, you know, having you know, trouble hitting against left-handed pitching. Uh, and uh, Daniel Vogelback, I mean, that was a perfect pickup. Uh, also, uh, Darren Ruff and the uh, San Francisco Giants, also a perfect pickup for that as well. Uh, they, they didn't really have like a like a real flashy trade deadline, but they definitely made some underrated moves. I was a little surprised they did trade away J.D. Davis, uh, but uh, they, they did end up doing that. Mets and Braves, certainly two very uh, great baseball teams. That is for sure. Uh, so, you know, enough time has passed for me to say that now. And I, was even, I was even saying it when it's happening. I'm like, I'm not real sold on the Mets. They played good teams, and they played well against the good teams. Uh, and you can't deny it. I mean, it's, it's very simple. You've seen how, how well they played against the Yankees, how well they handled the Yankees, and the Yankees are a very good baseball team. Uh, I understand it was only in a two-game series, uh, but I mean, the, I definitely think they've they've you know definitely proven uh, that they can hang around with the big guys, and they're definitely one of the big guys. Uh, so no uh, question about that. And I do think the Phillies are uh, an above-average team. Uh, I don't think they're you know much you know too much above a 500 team. Of course, we are 10 games above right now, uh, but I mean, I'm really happy we're taking advantage of beating these bad teams. Right? I'm very, very proud of the Phillies for doing that. Uh, so hopefully, we can win the next two against the Washington Nationals. Uh, and uh, sweep this series, and uh, hopefully we can at least win two out of three against the Marlins. And of course, then we got that crucial, crucial, crucial three-game series against the New York Mets next weekend in City Field. So this is going to be very interesting to see how this all plays out. Uh, so uh, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Please don't forget your bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Check out the social media link in the description section. At Phillies at Stove Media, Instagram, Instagram, follow me on Twitter at Beyond Stove Media. Call or text 267-225-3992. Email me, phillyscienceofmedia at gmail.com. Uh, so, uh, Nick Castellanos, stay hot, my friend. I mean, a guy that's been uh, hitting nearly 300 the past month. I understand the OPS hasn't been very good, but, uh, you know, he's really starting to turn around. The long ball's finally starting to be there. So, 6 and 5 the first pitch tomorrow night. Patrick Corbin, 4 and 15 with a 6 5 7 ERA. Ouch. 
Going into Ranger Shawara 75 of the uh, 360 here. So guys, thanks so much for watching. I'm Luke and I'll talk to you later. Let's go film. So see you guys.